Okay, so the platform gives us a signal that we are live now. Welcome, everybody, to the new webinar series of Key Factor about IoT and cybersecurity. And uh, before we start, I want to introduce me and my co-speakers here, and uh, then we jump right in what do you can expect and what we want to present over the next upcoming sessions. So my name is Andreas Philipp. I'm working in the IoT team at Key Factor as a business developer. I'm around about 30 years in the cybersecurity space and starting as a developer, um, jumping over into the sales department, operational department. And then now over the last two, three years, I I'm, I'm made a deep dive into the industrial IoT uh, and cybersecurity area. Admir. Yes, hello, everybody. My name is Admir Abdrahmanovic. Uh, my current role at Key Factor is uh, Senior Vice President for the Corporate Strategy meaning that I need to keep track of, I don't know, standards, regulations to uh, mergers and acquisitions, new startups and whatnot. Uh, my background is map, so I used to be a coder and I'm uh, one of the co-founders of Prime Key, which two years ago merged together with uh, Key Factor. I love technology, so if I do sound a little bit nerdy, I'm sorry for that. Guillaume, it's now your time. Hey, so my name is Guillaume Crinon. I am French. I belong to the same IoT team as Andreas with the role of uh, Director of Business Strategy. Um, I don't have that much expertise and, uh, and legacy in security as my, my, my two colleagues. I've been in the uh, topic for six or seven years now. And my, my true background at the beginning of my career uh, 25 years back is chip design so quite different but when we talk about iot and uh, and that kind of devices that expertise is interesting as well perfect many things so i'm now switching over and switching on our slides what do you expect today can you expect today here in this series is so today we, we are not following or, or going the, the standard path, we are not going to uh, yeah, present you slide after slide. Um, we want to elaborate a little bit on different kind of topics before we, before we jump into this. Um, let, me, let me talk a little bit about key factor uh, and so that you get a little bit more the background and why IoT and cybersecurity in IoT is one of our our main main focus area where we see also our growth path. So when we started as key factor in, in 2001, and so our roots are in the PKI consulting angle and in the open source um, PKI and signing software solution. And these two open source projects, ECBC, EJBCA and signserver.org, they are still around and they are still alive. Uh, visit our websites uh, and and uh, learn what's behind that technology, and um, that that is the foundation you know, of our business. Um, PKI consulting, everything around certificates, how to issue certificates, how to use certificates, and that is also what we believe at Key Factor that cryptography is an essential part. Yeah, in building trust in our connected world and connected infrastructure. Um, from the IT environment uh, into the Internet of Things, into the industrial Internet of Things, the digitalization, trust is essential. And that is what we are providing with our tools and technologies. And, and, um, and our technology are designed and, and what we try to achieve is that we are offering you a simple and scalable solution um, so that you can, you know, based on your business model, based on your usage, you can consume our technologies. And um, here's the last slide that I will show before we are 
jumping more into uh, an open discussion. Um, you know, here you see our offering today is at key factor. We have the middle layer. And the middle layer is our PKI foundation. Um, there, there you find EJBCA Enterprise. Uh, you find the uh, uh, certificate issuing technology. Um, and uh, that is connected to our command and our control infrastructure where you can yeah, administrate and where you can you know, cover certificate lifecycle, lifecycle automation, key management, um, uh, identity provisioning. We will come later on this topic uh, today. And um, also the life, device lifecycle management is also covered in the control environment. And on the right hand side, we have also the key factor Signum uh, portfolio where we are offering uh, signing functionality for documents, code signing, time stamping. So, a necessary uh, tools and technologies that is needed today when you want to establish and want to build up a trusted infrastructure. And all of these technology we are, we are providing, or you can consume it you know, on premise in the cloud. Yeah, as a hardware appliance. Um, so we have a huge portfolio. So you are welcome to visit our website or to contact us and our sales teams you know, to learn more about what we are offering and, and how you can consume it. And, but coming back to these uh, new series of, of webinar uh, that we want to provide you uh, via this Pride Talk platform to you. So we believe that um, Cybersecurity is essential and an essential building block uh, for the IoT environment. And um, you cannot cover the whole topic in one presentation. Yeah, so we, we think that small steps are important. And that means also that, that we want to provide you, you know, webinars where we are addressing dedicated viewpoints and aspects of IoT and cybersecurity in IoT that you can learn step-by-step step, you know, what it means to build or to de develop an essential, infra uh, essential trusted infrastructure. And that is what you can expect over the next uh, months um, in this series. So sometimes we will, we will dive very deeply into technical aspects of IoT cybersecurity when it comes to certificate issue, when it comes to standards and how standards are addressing digital certificates. But also on the other hand side, we will also draw more, sometimes also more the big picture that you, you give an overview. Why is, uh, for example, a digital identity important for uh, an automotive or a med tech environment and where they are used and what are the pitfalls there. Yeah, so, so that is, I think that is our goal you know, in, in this round here that we bring to you different kind of aspects and you're absolutely welcome. And we want to motivate you also to send us suggestion of topics that you want to see and that we should address in, in this series uh, and that's in your interest. Um, so maybe sometimes you have an, an, uh, a protocol or a new standard that's published and you want to learn a little bit more about this and about the, the you know, circumstance and the, the usage and the, the cybersecurity aspects that are built in, or maybe a legislation like the, in the European, uh, union, there was the, the Cybersecurity Act was a new proposal about uh, device certification. Maybe we can elaborate on that. And uh, of course, we will also reach out to to um, externals to see if we can hire some some interesting speakers about this. So that is what you can expect, and um, that is what we want to provide you over the next year. So before. Now, let's talk a little bit about cybersecurity, digital identities, IoT, you know, and bring you, uh, give you a more, a bigger picture. Admir, maybe you can yeah. start and, and elaborate a little bit on this topic. Sure. Uh, thank you, Andreas. Uh, so, you mentioned the, uh, the EU, for instance, Cybersecurity Act. 
there we have a, a very nice example of the regulatory uh, push where at least the corporations that are active within the EU will need to address some mandatory changes that, that are coming our way. This is not specific to EU. We have issues of, I don't know, what could be a good example, supply chain security that is also addressed, say, in North America, but generally worldwide. And there are also, we have a, a NIST 2 directive also coming up that qualifies which different type of organizations are considered to be a critical infrastructure. It could be anything from the banks, but it could be very much so uh, electricity power grid providers or ma ma major providers of, of products and services that can affect our societies. And of course, uh, let's not, we cannot live only in our beautiful technology world. There is also a harsh reality that is also uh, currently creating situation where many corporations are figuring out new ways how to assure that their supply chain security is done in a more, say, agile way, where there, there is a possibility to uh, incorporate maybe com components from uh, different sub-suppliers. So all that together creates a very complex environment when we look as a vendor, key factor, how when we are helping our customers or when we are collaborating with our partners on different type of projects. And then if something is extremely complex as an area, the importance is not to dig yourself in into a be it short sighted solution or a solution that uh, that has been I would say made a little bit as a one bet, betting on one thing and then assuming that that thing will be uh, provided for you forever and ever. We have seen recently that, for instance, Google is exiting IoT or half exiting, whatever we, the definition is, but the impact on organizations starting from startups to large organizations that may have connected themselves with the, with this uh, platform is huge. I, I can not imagine that uh, these organizations are happy right now. At least they are working diligently to assure uh, what will, uh, to create some plans, what will be their future. And then coming back even uh, lower level or closer to what we at Key Factor do, uh, as uh, Andreas has outlined, yes, we do certificate issues and we do, we think that we are doing it really, really great in terms of what our products can do. However, for these complex problems uh, where we are mapping technologies, standards, regulations, and different type of circumstances, it is very important to divide problems into manageable parts, manageable sticks. And therefore, it is the idea that, that we are presenting here, the power of small steps. If we divide the problem into, into parts that we are able both to understand, address, and make, say, uh, um, requirement specification or uh, send an RFP about, and then implement that portion, then we have created one step forward. When we create hundreds of those small steps, we have managed to conquer a very, very complex uh, si uh, mm. situation. And, and that is, uh, in our experience, the, the method that successful organizations that we have been working with throughout the last 15 years within the IoT industry, that they are applying that. It's not specific to the current political situation. It's it's interesting to apply this for the any complex uh, pr uh, product and service uh, combination. So mm. that's kind of very generic thing. On the, on our side, also we work very much with providing identities for products and services that are then, say, cryptographically agile. Uh, mm. meaning that they can be issued uh, in in a way that 
later on as the um, technologies and uh, mathematics crypto cryptography improves and changes which will be maybe separate topic for us uh, as that changes that also uh, that our products allow our customers uh, to to live with that well but then uh, now i have spoken very very uh, generically about the complex situations but the, the uh, in our little world identities are probably the foundational stone uh, of um, mm. and management of these identities over the lifetime of a product that might be anything from three months to maybe 30 years in some situations is very very important and we we spend a lot of time in our engineering assuring that uh, it would be um, throughout the lifetime and the life changes of the products that our customers have be supported uh, properly and adequately. So that's kind of my a little bit kind of very, very generic thing. We can also dive into some specific regulations. There are also yeah. ISO regulations, standards that uh, depending on which vertical our customers are in, they need to comply with. The, there's a whole lot of things that, uh, that, that, that we want to, to be able to monitor properly and provide our products and services that they mapping at least from the cryptography side towards what are the business and the regulatory requirements. Mm, mm, mm. I think that, that, that from my point of view, it's also a very good aspect um, that, um, and, and that is exactly what we want to also to achieve, that we are not you know, throwing the, the huge and the, the big yeah, standards and and stuff on our audience. Uh, mm -hmm. That we said, no, let's dive a little bit deeper. And um, maybe sometimes also that she says, okay, that's a standard only reply or applicable for uh, the automotive. Mm -hmm. um, so then, yes, uh, but um, um, it is also important that you are choosing, especially for this IoT environment, you are choosing vendors and partners. Uh, that 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 is on your same path. That is on your same growth path, and that is also have have a focus on, yeah, um, on 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 technology, on standards, following standards. Uh, that's very important. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. the, I would say that again, uh, one of the formulas of success is to follow the open standards wherever possible. That allows us not only say for cryptographic agility, mm -hmm. that is kind of something that we pride ourselves to be able to deliver, but also some kind of say vendor uh, independence wherever possible, avoiding vendor locking. That, that is hugely Absolutely. important. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so that brings us to the point where I, I open up some headlines over the last that we saw over the last months uh, around IoT and, and some trends. And um, so that is something for me. Let, let's talk a little bit on about this headlines and see what's behind that and then see um, yeah, if, if this only a, a marketing headline or it's something very seriously about this. And um, let's pick up the uh, zero trust. Yeah, so zero trust is in each mouth today and uh, in each forum, in each newspaper, in each uh, yeah, uh, environment, you see that zero trust is popping up. And um, also what we learned is that zero trust, if you're talking to different kind of vendors, they have different of un kind of understanding about this. Uh, but nevertheless, um, um, the question for me is, um, and Guillaume, I think you, you're coming more also from the, the semiconductor industry and you are dealing with devices and the components of device. Uh, and is zero trust really the silver bullet you know, to solve everything, to, to protect your environment in a proper way? Well, that's, that's interesting because silver, silver bullet in IoT, so... Zero trust comes from the IT, okay? So it's a concept that's been developed over the past 15 years, I think. 
Uh, and basically, the idea is to go from a perimeter protected security to something else where you don't trust anything, you don't trust the networks, and you keep checking and rechecking. So I, I elaborate on that. So to give you an idea, the um, mm -hmm. in the past, I worked in a company where, um, of course, we had a corporate network and the company was global. Yeah. And in our meeting rooms where we would invite customers or partners, there were internet cables coming on the table. So we had a, we had Wi-Fi for, for our employees and we had Wi-Fi for visitors, but we also had those cables on the meeting rooms that were there and which were obviously dating from a time where Wi-Fi was not as deployed. Mm -hmm. And interestingly enough, anybody connecting that computer with that Ethernet cable could have access to lots of internal resources. So that's the real example of what IT security used to be, where you protect a perimeter. And, and you assume that you have that internal network inside the company, which is protected by physical means of mm. walls and access control and, mm. and, and and wiring and cables, you know, and VPNs. Uh, and that within that perimeter, you 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 you, you define of course um, uh, you, you define groups of users but but basically anybody clever enough can access lots of different things and and you don't you don't you don't recheck what somebody is inside he he can say inside and he can do a lot of things so 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 zero trust as opposed to that is a concept where basically you don't trust anyone so you keep checking and checking again the id mm. and 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 you, you you keep monitoring what's happening on the network and you grant as 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 little privilege as possible mm. to mm. anyone circulating on the network and accessing resources so that everybody or every person physical person or a, a, every computer program has the minimum minimum access right to, uh, to to the resource they need but not more yeah. so that's yeah. uh, that's interesting and w when you develop that and, and after the the pandemic that we've experienced all of us and and where our corporations had to adapt quickly so can you imagine how it was difficult for those companies who had perimeter production with vpns all of a sudden sending everybody home and, and and allowing their employees to access internal resources through the internet. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a big, big shift. And for the IoT, of course, it's interesting because in IoT, there's internet. So which means that an IoT device will, by definition, use the internet network to exchange data with something else. So uh, very often, that will be a server. And, mm. and that server will be remote. So uh, not on-prem and uh, even sometimes not in the same country or on the same continent. And, and, and the data will be carried by maybe sometimes five, six, seven different uh, in, in internet providers mm. or, or, or backhaul uh, systems. So the idea is not to trust anything. And when you don't trust anything, you want to check and recheck and recheck. So it can be very painful. So I mean, as a human, if I'm being asked my ID card if I want to buy some bread at the bakery, mm. I think I will find that boring. But mm. the machine can do that, and it's only a, a little overhead on the uh, on, on the network usage. But mm. if you have the energy and the bandwidth, it's probably not a problem to implement that. So that's very interesting for IoT. Yes, because all of a sudden that means that if you have, like Admir said, identity, mm. strong identity, the foundation of everything. So if you have a strong identity inside a device. And that identity that can be mathematically proven by the yeah. machine, and and then that machine or that program can present that identity to a different machine, and and you can automate that identity check every time there needs to be a transaction. So that's very interesting because all of a sudden you don't need to trust your network providers, and that links back to what Admir was pointing in mm -hmm. terms of agility. You don't want to be tied to life with a cellular network provider, for instance. So if you rely only on the SIM card that you're placing in your device to provide your identity, 
or on that security the day yeah. that you want to change a uh, mobile network operator you're losing that identity and you have to reprovision your some your devices yeah. with something else which sometimes involves sending physically somebody to retrofit something or to upgrade something on the device so it's uh, it, it's very difficult so i think the foundation of uh, zero trust in the IoT anyway is that strong identity and that strong identity should be to be a device and the best way to mm -hmm. issue identities today is with public infrastructure and with 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 standard certificates so x509 so it's and, and, and that zero trust implementation it's all about how often you you, you check those identities so so in, in IoT you may not always have the the horsepower or the energy mm -hmm. or the bandwidth to perform identity checks all the time. Mm. So there are mechanisms that you can implement like for, for TLS, for instance, the, uh, the, the TLS sessions, you can resume a session with relying on a, on, a, on, a, on a formal check. So when you're implementing your security, you have to balance all that, but, but definitely mm. zero trust interesting. And, and at the other end, you, you, you need servers capable of filtering up connections and, and checking mm. those identities and resisting to denial of services attacks. And, and, and again, you, you, mm. you need to monitor what's happening. So at the same time, you need to implement systems that will constantly monitor the behavior of devices. So, you know, if it's a low power device, mm. which is only supposed to access to a server for, say, uh, upgrading a, a location or, or, or some data like mm. twice a day. And, and, and that device all of a sudden starts accessing that same server like 10 times a day. It means that something's going wrong there. So you have to, right. you, you have to take action and you yeah. have to, to, to take measures yeah. for that. But again, if you want to implement that zero trust, it means that on the device itself, you need to you need to do a few things. So, uh, Andreas, you, you you mentioned firmware signing, right? In your right. in your introduction of what Key Factor does, yeah, yeah. firmware yeah. signing is so important in the IoT because wh when you start sending machines appliances mm. all over the place in different countries in big numbers, which can be ten thousand, hundred thousand. Speaking of cars, it's even millions. You want to make hmm. sure that the software running on these appliances and devices comes from yeah. you and that is not a rock software that was injected by somebody who wants to use your identity to access your resources. So it means that on the device itself, if you want to implement zero trust, it means that you have to have some means of hardening the security. So right, with, right. Uh, with secured hardware, with with clustering inside the processors, with devices uh, periodically uh, but I reporting. Think, yeah, I think th that is something that you mentioned. It's also that you have uh, that you have a bi-directional uh, communication between uh, uh, communication, and that you're relying also on on services that are providing in the internet and with cloud services. Correct. Yeah. That brings me to the point that <clears throat> we also talked before. It's that that uh, Google is shutting down his IoT core services, internet stuff, he, uh, his his IoT platformer, and um, I think one side we have the service that is that is shut down, but that brings us also to the topic: what happened with the trust that was established via such a platform to the IoT device. Uh, and then you have also the zero trust concept. Maybe that's be underneath, and yeah, that is, yeah, the foundation is gone if the platform is gone. Atmir, what do you think about this one? Um, well, uh, let me formulate myself politically correctly. Uh, yeah, when you have a marketing company that is foundation of your uh, trust model, that's. A recipe for disaster yeah. and nothing bad about great engineering coming out from Google, but certainly uh, long term decisions, the uh, decisions mm -hmm. that have long term impact, excuse me, can could be extremely detrimental to any organization that that's using IoT core services from Google, be it startup or somebody big. Uh, just to give you a counter example, I don't think mm. that, for instance, Siemens would 
be exiting IoT business anytime soon, given that that's their bread and butter. So that's why I'm using this politically incorrect uh, mm. terminology of Google being a marketing company. Uh, and then that brings us back to, to the mm. core idea, trying to wherever ever possible use open standards to be able to switch from a vendor one to vendor two. Uh, sometimes uh, we see with our customers that they are actually using two or more cloud providers for different type of products or services. Mm -hmm. If it's a big multinational company, maybe one business unit for, I don't know, historical reasons or whatever reasons are using one vendor and maybe another business unit is using another vendor that gives gives them a, a at least internally some kind of knowledge and capacity mm. to potentially switch from one to the other and mm. of course uh, if my product or my service has been completely uh, uh, architectured towards one single vendor well yeah. if that vendor changes fundamentally uh, shifts their offering or uh, basically this shutting down well whatever the, the was going to happen with it that has a huge impact to our customers who are within the iot industry mm -hmm. so there, there's that importance of being able to maybe even in the in the get-go plan for unthinkable plan mm -hmm. for uh, situations where your business will be disrupted for one or the other reason it could yes, be Google, yes. it could be, you know, uh, force majeure, whatever are the situations that can occur in, in our uh, complex, modern and wonderful world. Yeah. Yes. And, and, and th that's, uh, that's uh, an area that we at Key Factor try to address. Of course, yeah. our, uh, our scope is only partial, but again, uh, cryptographic agility and agility of, say, not only agility, but also the, the concepts of how we are delivering our services through uh, standardized protocols has been proven uh, very successfully because in the situations where our customers need to switch from vendor A to vendor B when it comes to, say, cloud side, it's, it is possible to switch service if you are using uh, standardized protocols. It, it, at least it's easier. I'm not going to say mm -hmm. It, 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 it is painless it's it's pain for our customers then of right. course there is a, a there is a lot lots of to be discussed there in the terms of the what i previously mentioned what is this trust model that connects very yeah. much to what uh, you mentioned the zero trust if we want to achieve zero trust truly we have to have really good trust model and then if we have done that fundamentally correct, then these type of situations might not be so detrimental for our business, or at least mm. our organization can transition in due time. That's pr probably also uh, a topic on itself um, to be discussed, right. how to be uh, able to transition mm. from vendor one to vendor B and avoid vendor locking. Absolute, absolute. I think that that is something we can also maybe in, in some upcoming webinars we can talk about this. Uh, and um, I think also a, a huge uh, pillar uh, for solid groundwork in trust and also in zero trust concept are digital identities. And uh, Guillaume, you, you Paul posted this uh, topic here that if you know a passport, you certainly understand the PKI. Yes. Yeah, I think that for my point, I think that that's essential. Um, and uh, maybe maybe you explain it a little bit better. Yeah. Uh, sure. Uh, deeper. Okay. Yeah. Sure. So okay. So that's easy. So you know when I prepared for that session, I put in front of me all the different identity that I'm using as a human. So okay. So first, I'm not I'm not a secret agent. I have only one identity. It's official. So I have a passport. Have a driving license. Yeah. Social security, smart card, key card, banking card, lots of things. Okay. Wow. And all those different cards and documents, they allow me to do one or more things in my life. Mm -hmm. But but my my elector card gives only the right to vote, not to drive a car. So yeah. it's it, what's interesting is that as a human, I have one identity, but I have several ways to prove it 
and 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 those ways on documents are segmented into usage so that's i think yeah. a good foundation of security and when when you apply that to to iot and to to, to machines mm. that's also very interesting because if you look at the machine for instance it, it, it can exhibit different identities so mm. not only one but different it can have a mac address it can have an imsi or uh, if it's a sim card it can mm. have certificates to access to servers and 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 it can have more things and and sometimes yeah. even several mac addresses and it's not recommended to use only one single of these identities to to do everything okay you you have to cluster like in your real life so back to me so if you own a passport i think you understand the concept of certificate okay so what's a passport it's a document where there's your name biometric information so picture uh, fingerprinting on a chip and 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 a validity date and and mm -hmm. that official document is signed by a government okay so mm -hmm. that when you use your passport to cross a border the custom officer if if that guy trusts your state, it will he will trust the signature on your passport. And then, if your passport biometric matches you as a human, if the validity uh, validity date hasn't expired, and if you're not on a blacklist, mm -hmm. if you're not a criminal, you can enter the country. So that's interesting because that's exactly how the way certificates do uh, do, do, do work. So mm. the, the, the 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 strongest ID document. For, for, for a machine is, is a certificate. And, and the issue of that certificate is a public infrastructure. So, yeah. so again, you, you can have your serial number as a machine, as an identity in, in your certificate. And, and there are algorithms, mathematics, that can help you prove ownership of that certificate when you're yeah. a machine. Yeah. There, there's a but validity date. Yes. Yeah, but you need this trusted advisor. You need this trusted yes. advisor. And yes. I just said, okay, that is the machine with the serial number, and I prove this because it runs through a verification and registration process. And yes. here it is. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So, and the validity should be limited in time because yeah. if you want to enforce regular checks, of course, you don't want to issue unlimited in time certificates because mm -hmm. you want to enforce regular checks. You want to, to force re-enrollments and, mm -hmm. uh, for, for that zero trust security policy. So you need to configure your service for that. You need to implement mutual authentication so that, you know, on the web, our, our web browsers just identify the distant uh, websites. Mm -hmm. In the IoT, you want to do that both ways. So you want right. to authenticate the server the, 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 the device is talking to, but the server, most importantly, must authenticate the device that is requesting access to, to the server resource. So, you know, provided the device can prove ownership of the cert and the validity hasn't expired and, and the yeah. cert has not been revoked so on that blacklist, yeah. then the server can grant access to whatever resource. But again, you, you may need several certs per device depending on what kind of resources you're, 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 you're accessing to. In zero trust, you have at least two, 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 two planes, you know. You have the control yeah, plane on the data plane. Yeah, that's that's an important point uh, that you says here. Um, maybe you have different kind of identities or different kind of use cases and environments, uh, and sometimes you only have a residence permit, yeah, as to do so as well as a device. Uh, yes. So, um, and then I think that, and also the validity is not a, not a, from my point of view, not it's, it's not a burden. It's not a a, a point. And uh, because you cannot implement an uh, identity in the industrial world, uh, everybody says, oh, we need a long term uh, relationship and everything. But also uh, in our in our real world, our passports are valid, valid, normal, valid as for 10 years. Of uh, course. And that's a long period. Of course. Uh, and it takes you a few weeks to renew it while a machine can get a new exactly. certificate in a matter of milliseconds. So And implementing a solid. Yeah, um, digital yeah, <laughs> transition or digital service. You also think about how to renewal that. Yeah, it's not only that you says, okay, I have the the first initial yeah, provisioning and and imprinting of a device identity. You also need need to think about okay, how to renewal it uh, and how to switch it and how to you know, 
put it on blacklist sometimes. Yeah, so, so but, but yeah. again, you know, you, you can have that initial thing that proves the, uh, the genuineness of your, of your machine. Uh, and you yeah. can have maybe uh, several of them. But, but really, if you want to access to, uh, to, to a server, to resource, that, yeah. that should be a different certificate. And that one should be much shorter lived because Absolutely. you want to recheck and recheck and recheck. And you want yeah. to have that, uh, that, that agility that, that Admir and you talked before with Google IoT Core. When something like that happens, mm. you, you want to have that access to Google IoT Core as a different certificate, as the certificate that is verifying your, your, your firmware. Yeah. Because the day you need to switch from Google to something else, it will be an entirely new certificate with an entirely new branch in your PKI tree. And you don't want to disrupt your, your, your firmware software production chain. So right. it's, it's always very good to segment. And you know, good news, all those machines and IoT devices, they, they are always more memory every year and more resources and, and consume less energy. And yeah. we have network bandwidth available. So it's, it's only a, a very, very, very small overhead. To have that, that, that kind of security, but it's so powerful. Perfect. So, looking at the time, so we have 45 minutes, we have three minutes to go now, very close to the end. And um, let, let's, um, I think we have prepared something here is where you can find also more online documentation documents that we are providing from our company. You can look at our GitHub repos uh, for our EJBCA sign servers. Uh, uh, you can look at our documentation area where we are providing huge documentation of integration examples, uh, how-to examples uh, of providing digital identities, managing digital identities. So that's a huge repos, huge archive where you can find information. And if you want to join our forums, um, please um, scan this uh, uh, QR codes and you can jump into the discussion round uh, for EJBC and Science Server. All these slides are available here at Bright Talk. You can later on visit that. And um, before we are ending this session, um, I want to give you an outlook on uh, what's coming up in the next webinars uh, and uh, what you can expect um, in the the yeah, upcoming webinars here. Let's see. Here we go. So on the 9th of November, um, we will make a deeper dive into the X, world of X509 certificates and digital identities into industrial application. And uh, one of my colleagues, Florian Hanke, he's from... Um, um, from the campus uh, here in Germany, in, in at the Black Forest, um, uh, it's a research uh, organization, and his focus is on cybersecurity, industrial automation environment, and you make a deep dive into the uh, usage of certificates uh, when it comes to standards, uh, and uh, like OPCUA, MQTT. Also, he will addressing a little bit the meta standard in the smart uh, home environment. Um, and he will talk a bit about pitfalls and how to solve this. In December, um, Ellen Boehm uh, from North America, she will make, she will yeah, open up a broader picture on the digital identities and uh, will talk about uh, why it is important and it's essential that digital identities in IoT is needed. And um, she will you know, pick up some use cases, some customer cases, uh, and she will um, also elaborate on what's happened when a trust chain is broken, like using self-signed certificates in such an environment and how you can avoid this. And that's the outlook for the you know, upcoming webinars this year. And um, for that point, I want to say thank you. And we want to say thank you to everybody who are joining this webinar and hope to see you next time. And if you have any question, any suggestion about topics, what you want to hear from us, please let us know via the chat, via Bright Talk, and we are picking it up. Many thanks and have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.